Okay, and there we go. So welcome to the Apply Leadership Info Session. Uh, as I said, I'm Sue, the Marketing Coordinator for Continuing Education here at the University of Windsor. And uh, thank you for taking the time to um, join us today. So uh, on the agenda today, I'll be doing a little bit of an introduction on what the Applied Leadership Program is. Uh, we do have a couple of guest speakers with us today, instructors Diana Sarkis and Dr. Amir, Amir Talai, um, who will be joining us a little bit later. And I'll uh, go into some more program specifics like dates, times, costs, and then I'll be moving on to the Q&A. So what is the Applied Leadership Program? It's a leadership program geared toward current and aspiring leaders, uh, whether you are already in a leadership role or ready for the next step in your career. Um, it is an eight week professional development program, which covers topics that leaders face every day from building communication skills, managing virtual or hybrid teams, um, coaching, to managing organizational change. And this year's industry project partner is actually uh, Rocket Innovation Studio. Um, and they will be involved in providing a real world leadership dilemma so that the tactics learned throughout the course can be applied to solve that challenge. Um, this will then lead to um, a presentation, a capstone presentation at the end of the program. So upon completion, leader learners will receive a certificate of participation issued by the University of Windsor Continuing Education. So some benefits to you and uh, benefits our learners is, you know, having those leadership and soft skills um, that will give you that competitive edge in your career, whether it be preparing for that next step in leadership or succeeding as an existing leader. Um, for applied learning, um, you'll be able to learn hands-on tactics that can be applied in real-world scenarios. Uh, there will be an opportunity for group work, which is a ne uh, great networking opportunity with other learners. Um, I've tried to make we've tried to make the scheduling as well as flexible as possible. And so with uh, the live and online instruction, it happens um, uh, in the evening, so you don't have to take time off work. Um, and it's just a few hours a week. Uh, you'll also be exposed to up-to-date best practices and principles um, of successful leaders. And you'll be learning from more than one instructor, each bringing their own area of expertise and experiences to add to your knowledge base. So there are eight modules within the program uh, representing the eight week program. So we'll be covering one module per week. Um, and our instructors today will be providing a little bit more of an overview into some of those details. So the first uh, guest speaker we have is Diana Sarkis, um, and she will be diving a little bit more into the details of the program too. Uh, Diana holds a master's in industrial relations, a specialized advanced degree in human resources and labor relations. Along with being a special instructor at the Odette, Odette School of Business, Diana operates as an HR consultant where she partners with organizations throughout Canada to provide expertise in compensation, training and development, recruitment, and outplacement services. She previously worked in the field of human resources in a full-time capacity in various sectors, including manufacturing, professional services, and the broader public sector. Through her employment experience, Diana has gained extensive experience in labor relations, recruitment, training, and development, and strategic human resources practices. Diana, thank you for joining us today. Please let us a little bit into your world and tell us more about the program. All right. Well, thank you that for that wonderful welcome. So as mentioned in my initial introduction, I'm truly passionate about the field of human resources or actually what I like to call dealing with people issues. And this is one of the most challenging aspects for organizations simply because employees are people and people are complex. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. 
But just to add on to what was already mentioned in my initial introduction, I spent the last 14 years working in the field of human resources and still practice as an HR consultant. And typically when I'm working with organizations, it's for more complex, challenging HR issues and programs such as the Applied Leadership Program prevents leaders and organizations from getting in those types of situations. Just to touch upon my teaching experience, um, I've been teaching at the Odette School of Business at both the undergraduate and master's level for I think the past five, six years, I'm not sure how long. <laughs> and it's actually here that I actually developed a love of teaching managers and professionals. And this is simply because I, I teach a lot of what is called evidence-based management practices. And what that is, is ultimately looking at really challenging sometimes very frustrating people related issues and looking at evidence based research based best practices to deal with those issues in a more practical sense. So I'm actually going to break down what that actually looks like a little bit later when I talk about the modules that I teach in the applied leadership program. But I often find this is a very valuable process for both myself and my students. Because oftentimes as leaders or up and coming leaders, we like to think or feel as though we have sometimes very unique or isolating issues that are actually very common. And we have a variety of resources, um, concepts and practices that assist to address that. OK, so let's get back to the Applied Leadership Program. Uh, this is a very valuable program. I, I truly think it's practical and we're not teaching just concepts for you to know. They're concepts that are practical and meant to, for you to bring them back to your workplace and, and put them into practice. So recognizing again, this program is for um, leaders. If you're currently leading, or up and coming leaders to build their sales skill set. I can't speak this morning <laughs> to lead, motivate, and unfortunately, sometimes even correct employee behavior. So one thing I want us to think about is a program such as this, you know, oftentimes employees, they're promoted into leadership positions. Maybe yourself was in that role as well. You're you're an excellent contributor. You know, I often give the example to my students. An engineer can be a very good engineer. So they're promoted into a managerial role and often they're finding themselves leading a team of people because they're a manager now and they don't have the tools or the formalized training to really recognize how to do this effectively. Even our more experienced leaders who have been through this program as well find value because they often don't have the opportunity to reflect too intently on what the what type of leader they currently are and what type of leader they have potential to be or that they hope to be, right? So recognizing just again, continuing about the program, um, it helps all participants bring their current, what I like to call pain points. So things that you're dealing with right now with managing your employees. So not only are you walking away with new knowledge, resources, but also solutions to what you're currently dealing with. And you can bring that back to your workplace immediately. OK, so let's bring forth. I actually teach four modules two two kind of more facilitating two more content related aspects in the applied Re leadership program. And the first one actually begins with the industry project. So as it's previously mentioned already in the fall 2022 offering, the industry partner is Rocket Innovation Studio. And at this first module, um, we introduced the organization. And actually, I just want to know, I'm incredibly excited to the fact that we're working with a technology-based organization. Even though I do often find with uh, HR or people issues, despite industry profession, we see common themes, but it's often interesting to see it in a certain industry. But in this module, we're introduced to the organization. And at this point, we're going to present a series of leadership case studies that as participants, they will work on throughout the eight week duration. 
Another piece that I want to mention, it was already mentioned in the introduction, is a big part of the Applied Leadership Program is professional networking. So the participants are broken out to groups of people working in various industries, various positions, and they, they pick their case at this point, okay? So at this point, it's important to note that the organization will present uh, their, their leadership cases. And as the participants work through the modules over the course of the eight weeks, they're going to gain valuable concepts, resources that will eventually assist them to making an appropriate uh, recommendation to, to the industry partner at the end of the program. So this is kind of just setting the stage in regards to the applied leadership program there. So then I come back, I think after a couple weeks, and I lead the what we call the leading self and others module. This is one of my favorite modules to speak to teach, to be honest. And we recognize that this module ultimately explores different types of leaderships. The participants are again given the opportunity to explore the leader that they currently are and the type of leader that they they want to be. We spend a lot of time talking about followers as well because we recognize being a leader is not necessarily just about the leader itself, it's about their followers. And we're going to introduce concepts such as the growth mindset and setting up the appropriate environment for your, for your I don't want to say followers, but your employees to thrive. And, and setting up what we call a sense of psychological safety, which allows your followers to ultimately feel safe in, in developing their own leadership potential. So again, very practical in this aspect. We start off by having the participants assess their own leadership aspects, where they want to be, and they also develop a leader uh, development plan, right? So it's a formalized plan in regards to how to develop their leadership skills to the fullest. The nice thing also about the leadership module is we're giving the participants the vocabulary of what their leadership philosophy is. And this also helps to enlist support from others, right? Oftentimes, if you ask somebody, you know, I told you all I worked in HR for too many years. And one of the interview questions that we ask is what type of leader you are. You know, people cannot necessarily share what that actually looks like. They may say, you know, I, I have an open door policy or I like to really, um, help employees and get in there and work with them. But we give you different types of leadership styles. Another thing that I want to talk about is um, we introduce the, the importance of adjusting your leadership style to different people. Again, I remind you at the beginning of my chat, I, I said people are complex and oftentimes leaders need to take what we call a situational approach on how to deal with different followers. We also discuss how to deal with difficult or challenging people and how to help manage concepts. So to tie up on the leadership module, very interactive. We have very productive discussions on current leadership challenges, pain points, especially in the current reality that we're dealing with now. Offices are either operating back um, in on their campuses, I guess, or working with hybrid teams. Definitely something that that comes up in regards to how to manage that appropriately. So the next module that I actually teach is, I say all of them are my favorite, but this coaching and supervising module is, is more practical and really gets to the sense of developing those practical skills and managing employees. We built this module to help participants actually develop more of their coaching skills and learn best practices in performance management procedures. So we um, develop an opportunity for our participants to learn how to give real effective feedback step by step that is actionable and clear. And we also help the participants help the employees that they did that they oversee develop again that growth mindset and take more of an active role in their success or their their need for improvement. So another thing that we talk about, you know, oftentimes when we say performance management, perhaps in your mind, you're already thinking of struggling or problematic employees, but we also discuss the importance of giving employees, you know, 
good employees, the opportunity for development opportunities and, and providing effective positive feedback. Again, oftentimes I see leaders neglect to put this part or, or effort in the performance management aspect. So we want to ensure that this is not overlooked um, and we want to keep our good performers motivated, engaged and help them also continue to develop as professionals. Another thing that we actually talk about in this module is talking about how to delegate work effectively and how to again develop that constructive criticism to ensure that that employer leader relationship is still productive going forward, but also ensuring that that messaging is very clear in that perspective. So I will say the the supervising and coaching module is definitely more skills based in the perspective. We have many activities where the students have the opportunity to practice and um, demonstrate their coaching and feedback skills so that they're motivated or comfortable moving forward. And one thing I just want to note is um, one of the assignments for the coaching and supervising module is actually developing a formalized coaching plan for, for a um, hypothetical employee that allows you to, to take that away again to know how to do that effectively. So last thing that I do is I actually come back for the capstone pro project and do a little bit of facilitating. Again, you will be working with your groups for the duration of that eight weeks. And at this point, you're going to present your recommendations to the industry partner who will be in attendance in that perspective. And I just kind of help in the throughout the, the eight weeks to help the participants work through that project. So that's all I have for today. All right, thank you, Diana. That was some very uh, valuable, I mean, it's very, very valuable content within these modules. Um, and looking forward to uh, hearing some more of your insights within these modules in the course as well. All right, the next uh, speaker we have is um, Dr. Amir Tela'i. Uh, uh, Amir holds a PhD in industrial and organizational psychology and has completed three postdoctoral fellowships in the fields of leadership and organizational psychology, focusing on leader counterproductive work behaviors, managing high conflict personalities in the workplace, and motivational processes in underperforming employees. Amir's passion is identifying and countermanding management, pseudoscience, and translating it. It's translating the cutting edge psychological science into practical solutions for organizational challenges leaders routinely face. Dr. Talai, please uh, tell us a little bit, thank you for joining us today, and please tell us a little bit more about the communication skills for leaders and managing organizational change modules. For sure, thank you very much. Thank you. And hi everyone, so uh, yeah, so, uh, for the communication module, we will start the session with uh, some of the major communication frameworks and theories and different components of communication. Like, for example, in any communication, there is a sender, a receiver, the message channels that are used to send the message. Is it like face to face? Is it an email? And any time that the communication fails, that's because we did not manage at least one of these components properly. Now, maybe we did not craft a good message. Maybe we did not choose the right channel. So we will learn these different components. Uh, and then there are some noises uh, associated with each of these components. And we will learn what those noises are and how to manage them. And obviously, uh, communication is a two-way process, so you should also be able to listen to others when they want to communicate with you. It's not just about you sending a message. So we will discuss the best practices of active listening and different listening styles as well. Uh, obviously, there is a lot on, uh, on the web about active listening, but we will get into more details about active listening, constructive listening, and that sort of thing. And uh, one of the most difficult ways of communication is virtual communication when it's not face to face, which makes it much harder. And miscommunication happens a lot when it's not face to face because we don't see the body language of the other person. 
we can't show them our body language, so uh, we may not be able to interpret their message. They may not be able to interpret our message. <clears throat> so, and I think we all experienced that during COVID because we suddenly needed to uh, go online and like do remote work. And some people were not prepared, were not trained how to like engage in virtual communication. Uh, we just knew how to send emails and maybe like do some Zoom calls, but again, we realized that there are so much, uh, so many uh, problems with virtual communication that uh, people need to be trained on. So we will talk about some of the main principles and best practices of virtual communication. Includes email, like uh, virtual, uh, like video conferencing, uh, even texting to some extent. And then we will talk about cultural communication. Obviously, we are living a very multicultural city. We work with colleagues and clients with a very diverse background. Uh, so we need to know some basics of cultural communication, like different cultural dimensions, how those dimensions may affect uh, how people interpret our messages, how we should like adjust our communication style. And uh, the net, finally, uh, we have a section, a very interesting section on communication with difficult people. So this is something that uh, you may not be able to find much on the web because it's uh, something that is between uh, an area between clinical psychology and industrial organizational psychology. Um, so communication may be actually not that hard with normal people. And by normal, I mean those people who are not difficult to work with. And what makes it hard is when people intentionally don't want to communicate. It's like a power game for them to show you that, for example, you could not influence them, that they have the power, you could not tell them what to do. Even if they are your subordinates, sometimes we see these people or colleagues or obviously bosses that anything you do, even if you use all the best practices and principles of communication, you still see that Apparently, they don't want to listen or they don't get what you say. Now, fortunately, we have some tips and techniques to communicate with that type of individuals. We first uh, learn what are those types of behaviors, how to identify those people. And you will see that communication with them should follow a very, very different set of principles. So whatever works with normal people, would not work with these people. So you need to know the uh, special techniques and tips on how to communicate with people who are considered as difficult employees or difficult people. I'm sure most of us have worked with some of these people before. So this is also a very unique section that uh, we will talk about in the communication module. And then I'll also uh, teach the managing for organizational change module. Now, nowadays we are going through change every day. So it's not about a single change project like every year. So I will use a change framework that could be used for both organizational and individual level changes. It includes five main stages. It starts with being aware and accepting that there is a problem and a change is needed. So sometimes people are simply not aware. They don't understand that there is a problem. And then wanting to change. So you may know that there is a problem. Your employees may be aware that there is a problem, but they may not want to change for various reasons. So they may not be ready to change. And sometimes they want to change, but they don't know how to change. And then uh, sometimes they know how to change, they are not able to change, just like when you know how to play a musical instrument, for example, but when you sit down and you want to play it, you don't know how to do it. So knowing to do something is really different from being actually able to do it. And that's one of the like uh, things that some managers may not know, and they think that just by training their employees, everything will go well and the change will be successful. And then we have reinforcing the change. So that's the last stage. So usually all kinds of changes go through all these stages. And in order to manage the change successfully, we need to know how to manage 
each of those stages uh, st stages successful. Now, because for example, if your employees are not ready yet for a change and you start training them, which happens a lot in organizations, and then obviously the change will fail. Now, if you do everything right, but you don't, for example, reinforce the change, again, the change will fail. So these are uh, five main stages of uh, change uh, known as the ADCAR framework, awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement, which is a very well-known and established change management framework uh, that we will learn in this module. And then we will focus on uh, resistance to change, how to identify sources of resistance in employees. Now, some sources are more obvious, some others may not be that obvious. So we will discuss all those possible sources of resistance, all those unconscious, subconscious reasons that people may resist the change and why they may not talk about it and uh, that sort of thing. So that's for the resistance to uh, resistance management. And finally, change conversation, which is also a very interesting uh, topic. So one of the reasons that change projects do not succeed is that managers don't know how to introduce the change, how to start that change conversation. They typically start with mentioning all the good things that may happen as a result of the change. And like, these are all the positive consequences that we will see in the future. And employees obviously will respond, yeah, sure, but those are also all the negative consequences of change. What about them? How, what can we do about them? And sometimes like managers start this conversation by mentioning all the current problems in the organization. Like these are all the public problems that we need to like overcome. And again, employees may respond, yes, but those are also all the good things with the current situation. So if you don't know as a manager how to introduce the change, how to start that change conversation, they will have something to uh, counter argue you. So it's really important to know how to uh, introduce the change, how to start that change conversation, and uh, that can play a very important role in convincing employees about the need for change. So those are the main topics that we will uh, discuss in these two modules, and uh, I'm really looking, looking forward to it. So that's for me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Talai. Thank you for joining. Um, that's a lot of very good, um, useful information, definitely something that can be applied uh, to any workplace or organization as a leader. So thank you very much for that. Um, so we actually have uh, two other instructors, Kyle Breichman and Dorian Linfield, who will be teaching effective teams and project management modules, respectively. So both Kyle and Doreen are um, well regarded in the industry. Uh, Kyle is an assistant professor at the Odette School of Business, and his research focuses on employee voice and interpersonal team dynamics, including team resilience and conflict. Kyle's mission is to help employees speak up with higher quality ideas and to assist leaders with creating and sustaining effective teamwork, such as by building their team's resilience capabilities and improving their conflict experiences. Doreen is an award-winning project management professional and PM educator for offering 20 plus years of experience in developing, executing, and leading a series of multi-billion dollar capital and business transformation projects to, to success for clients in the manufacturing, telecommunications, IT, and financial sectors. So I will touch briefly on each of these topics uh, covered by um, uh, by Doreen and um, and Kyle here. Uh, so for effective teams, um, so there's there's a few uh, key topics that uh, should be mentioned. Why good teamwork matters. Defining a team versus group. Six keys to a resilient team. How to build a resilient team. Pros and cons of team conflict. Stages of teamwork and conflict. Uh, when conflict happens, using various conflict management styles, getting smart goals, setting smart goals, begin your plan to build a resilient team. And finally, for um, the introduction to project management, the topics include phases of project framework, 
successful project criteria, triple constraints, developing a project charter and schedule, risk management identification, best practices to communicate to a group, managing costs, schedule and scope, ethically managing projects, closing the project and traits of a good PM. So that sums up the modules itself within the Applied Leadership Program. Um, I'll dive briefly into some of the dates and costs here. Uh, so this program is being uh, delivered virtually uh, every Thursday evening from October 13th to December 1st, 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. The fee is 1,200 plus HST. Uh, payment plans are available. U Windsor students, alumni, and staff are eligible for discounts. Um, the course is eligible for OSAP micro-credential application. And um, if you are an employer that wants to send a team member um, uh, into the program, uh, you may be eligible for uh, this program is eligible for the Can Can Canada Ontario Job Grant. Um, just email us at continue at uwindsor.ca. We can send you more details on that. Um, and then any other information that you're looking for regarding the program, in including details, uh, visit continue.uwindsor.ca. If you think of any questions after this presentation, uh, please, again, email us at continue at uwindsor.ca. We are very responsive to the email. So, um, yes, yeah, feel free to send us any questions you have that are program related. So. With that said, we'll get into the Q&A. Um, and if you have, um, if you dialed in to the meeting uh, and you have a question, please email us, continue at uwindsor.ca. We can address those um, as quickly and as accurately as possible. Uh, do you see some questions coming in now? Um, so I guess as, as some of the questions are coming in, um, one thing, question that we have uh, in continuing education a lot is what is the time commitment outside of class uh, that needs to be allotted towards this program? Diana, if you can talk to this. My camera wasn't working, sorry. Um, definitely great question. We, we do try to be mindful of the fact that you are working professionals. So we do allocate some time for you to meet with your group, but there is some required re reading and whatnot. I would definitely say no more than three hours per week in the perspective of the eight weeks that you're going forth um, to you know reflect upon the material, complete some of the assignments and collaborate with your group. It's it's um, not a, a huge commitment from that perspective. OK, thank you, Diana. Um, is the program limited to a certain amount of students? Yes, there is uh, a, um, I guess, a, a limit um, to the number of students. I believe it's uh, around 20. Um, but if you want specifics, you can uh, email us at continue at uwindsor.ca. Um, and ask any other questions you have regarding um, uh, class sizes. Uh, and another question is, when will the course be in person rather than online? So uh, this offering now is online. Uh, we are exploring other in-person options and sessions. Uh, we cannot give a hard date, however, of when we will be uh, offering this in person. But uh, stay tuned to our website, your email. Um, if you are not on our email, sign up for our interest list and we will notify you as soon as we um, offer another section of this again and what the format will be. Um, okay, we have another question coming in here. Just if I can, the fact that it's online, I, I wouldn't uh, feel as though it dilutes the problem by any means. We actually put a lot of thought into ensuring that it's still interactive. You're still getting uh, that networking piece. So if, if the online aspect scares you, it shouldn't. Oftentimes people find it easier to manage with their current workloads. They don't have to drive down, park in the university. So just something I hear a lot from participants. 
Thank you for uh, that clarification. Um, personally, I I prefer online as well, comfort uh, learning in the comfort of my own home as well. Uh, being a working professional um, just cuts down on the commute time on my end as well. So, um, okay, deadline for registration. The class starts October 13th. We typically like to see 10 days prior. Um, so probably around October 1st, uh, there is time to register, but uh, uh, Please keep in mind that um, if space is filling up quickly, it might be full by that time. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, are there prerequisites to the program? So there are minimal prerequisites. Uh, we do off, uh, we do recommend um, three to five uh, years of uh, work experience, basic computer skills, English language proficiency proficiency. Uh, this class is open to all, so um, those are really the three recommended uh, prerequisites. And then, of course, you'll need to have access to uh, high-speed internet and, you know, we'll set you up on Teams or Blackboard or wh whatever online platform that we're using at the time as well. Okay, um, see another question coming in now. Um, just so you know as well, um, if you're looking at um, tailoring your, like tailoring a leadership program um, or having some of these modules taught and tailoring it more to your organization, um, we do offer, continuing education does offer sort of these corporate um, training packages as well well um, that we can work with you on and, and tailoring a little bit more um, as opposed to like a, a public offering. Um, so email us at continue at uwindsor.ca if you are if that's something you're interested in too. Um, I talked about prerequisites um, and I was wondering can the skills be taken from the course be applied to any industry? So, uh, Diana, have you had, or uh, Dr. Talley, have you had any um, experience with prior uh, students that, I guess, is there a particular industry that um, would particularly benefit from this course, or is it sort of a general, you know, tactics that can be applied to any industry? Well, for the communication and change, it really does not, uh, it's not just for a specific industry. As I said, it could be applied even in your personal life how to communicate and even making changes to your personal life, let alone organizational. So for those two modules, no, it could be applied to any industry and organization. Great, thank you. And I would agree. Um, a lot of um, what we teach is definitely spe uh, specific to organizational challenges that I often find are universal, right? I, I always say this, you know, people are still people, whether they're a nurse or they are a professor or whatever else, we still see the same type of issues in terms of the challenges that we have in managing employees. So, so recognizing that it can be applied whatever industry you're, you're dealing with for sure. And just this is my third time teaching in the program. We've had uh, a lot of industries like and or er, energy sector, the public sector, manufacturing, and they all find quite a lot of value in what they get to take away. Great, thank you. Um, one question is, I would like to share the recording with a few of my team members to encourage participation. Will there will it be available? Yes, uh, the the meeting is being recorded currently and it will be posted um, on our both on our website and it will be emailed to all registrants so you will get a copy of um, the recording and you can you're free to um, forward that on as well okay um, do we have any more questions okay if there are no more questions please feel free I'm going to type our email in the chat continue at uwindsor.ca again. Uh, again, please feel free to email us there if you think of anything. And um, I thank everyone for joining us today um, and have a great Thursday. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Dr. Talai. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming as well.
Yes, thank you.